This is a $2,000 200 watt gaming laptop I use to track faces and control an animatronic eye mechanism and neck. And this is a $10 0.35 watt board which I think can do the job just as well. If this works, it could completely change the way I approach my animatronic builds in the future. This project was sponsored by JLC PCB. The design tools, prototyping service and full-scale mass manufacturing are perfect for all stages of the design process. A great example is this iMech driver board which I use in this project to handle servo control. Using JLC PCB I started with rough prototypes and hand soldered PCBs, gradually refining my design using their assembly service and their massive library of parts. Now I've made nearly a thousand of these and I've made this project into a product. Right now JLC PCB have an offer on flexible PCBs. Whether for wearables, medical devices or IoT applications, their FPCs reduce space and weight while staying super reliable. Just upload your Gerber files and get an instant quote. And here's the best part, FPCs begin at just $2 and now you can claim a $10 coupon to try them out. Check my links below to get the coupon and try out flexible PCBs from JLCPCE today. So first things first, I needed to find a camera that would work with this board. When I was using my laptop, I used a USB camera, but this board works with a 15 pin CSI connector. The good news is that this is super common. It's the connector type that the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3 and 4 use and most Pi cams use it too. The bad news is that most Pi cams come fixed onto a kind of clunky PCB and the connector itself is too thick to fit inside my eyeballs. I ended up finding this 22 pin slim camera, which actually is a much thinner connector despite having more pins, and it has all of the components soldered onto the flexible cable so it fits perfectly inside my eyeballs. All I needed was a 22 to 15 pin adapter. This camera actually is pretty high resolution, but in fact it doesn't really matter. One of the ways the vision board works so well with such low power is by scaling down the resolution of the video feed it analyzes to only around 200 by 200 pixels. Using Seed's browser tool, and by the way this is super useful, I can preview the output and see the model running in real time. More on that later though. Next, it was time to make the mechanical design. The design is actually heavily based on my recent project Coglet, but in order to condense everything down even more, I needed to move all of the electronics up into the head. I'm actually not going to go into huge detail about the mechanical design since most of the design features I've covered in previous videos, but I will highlight a cool detail. And that is that in my effort to make my projects more accessible and remove the requirement for you to find specific sizes of screws, I designed this one so that most of the servos snap into place and the few parts that do need screws can use the leftover ones that came with the servos. So you don't need to buy any more screws. These little packets have everything you need. Now I'm not sponsored by Seed or anything, but I do have to commend them on how easy it is to set up the machine vision model and get this project up and running. They have an online tool called SenseCraft which has a load of pre-trained models and you can use it to connect to the board, test them out, fine tune them and program the board too. There's some sliders here you can use to calibrate and fine tune the model like you can set the confidence threshold. So this is a score of how certain it is that it's seeing a face. And for my purposes, I set this a little bit lower than the default so that it would respond to a potential face even if it wasn't 100% sure about it. So each frame, the model will output an XY coordinate of the face plus a load of other data we don't care about. I have to thank Jared from Core Electronics for making a really useful guide to this board and writing some of the code which I used as a basis for my own. So my iMac board is based around the Raspberry Pi Pico and it communicates with the vision board using UART. That's the TX and RX pins. I have to admit that I probably could have put more work into figuring out this communication system. The code does slow down my movement quite a bit because every frame that the vision board is sending messages, my board is having to reconstruct all of that data into a JSON format, basically byte by byte. And at the same time, it's running the smooth servo motion system that I made for Coglet. The unique way which this presents itself is that the motion overshoots and rubber bands, whereas without the new code, it was much more precise. That's because my servos are driven with a management system that tracks their current position, velocity, and acceleration. And with the main loop being slowed down so much by having to read the vision board, it's not able to adjust the velocity of each servo fast enough. And so it frequently overshoots its target and has to return and goes back and forth a little bit. By fiddling around with the code, I eventually got this running at a workable pace. I don't think I have time to perfect this before Halloween by myself, but I'm really interested to see what the community can do with my open source files and in the comments and on my Discord server.
Now this is all working and it does look pretty cute, but the final piece of the puzzle was to give it some kind of skin. This was definitely not a job for CAD, so I decided to take the design into a 3D sculpting program. I faffed around a lot with this kind of workflow between CAD and 3D sculpting and at times it's been kind of a nightmare, but now I've finally figured out a process to make it as painless as possible. Step one is to figure out how it's going to attach in CAD. So I extruded these screw bosses which will eventually be merged into the shell design. I also made all of the exclusion zones for areas that the shell can't touch either because a screw goes through there or the mechanism moves and needs that space. Finally, I export the model itself. So in total, I export three models from CAD. One is the base model, two is the exclusion zones, and three is the screw bosses I want to include in the shell design. Then once I'm in my sculpting software, this time I use Nomad Sculpt, I can make my design trim the bosses to fit the outside shape of the shell and then subtract all of the exclusion zones. So in the end, I made a skull version and a pumpkin version. To make the skull, I used a model already loaded into Nomad as a base, but I'm pretty pleased with this pumpkin design I made completely from scratch. The final part of the system was making it battery compatible. So I wired up a two cell LiPo battery into a USB charger into a five volt regulator so this whole thing can be charged up and run completely offline. Now you can put this anywhere, lurking in the hallway, by the front door or hidden amongst the washing pile. And to test out the longevity of the battery and see how low the power consumption of the AI board really was, I left it running at full charge until it stopped working. In total it lasted about 15 minutes, which to be fair doesn't sound that impressive, but I think when you consider that there are five servers running constantly, plus real-time machine vision in a battery that's only 800 milliamp hours, I think it's actually fairly impressive. But it does highlight an important point and that's that the servers don't need to be on all the time. I can adjust the code in the future so that when the mechanism is not moving, which is quite a lot of the time, the servos can be powered down and consume no power. So if you want to build this yourself, I'm going to make a separate instructional video and I'll put everything you need in a link in the description. All of the instructions and STL print files are free to download. I will say that this project isn't going to be the most beginner friendly or polished, and if you want to give it a go, there will be a bit of trial and error and some fine tuning. Normally, I'm reluctant to release my designs until they're 99% working, but since Halloween is coming up, I wanted to release a solid project ahead of time. The first places I will be looking at improving with this is the confidence threshold of the model to prevent false positives and the comms between boards to speed up the movement system and keep it synchronised with the face detection. Most of the parts of this are going to be on my shop and if they're not there right now they will be soon and if you want to get the CAD files including the entire design history and the bosses and exclusion zones which you can use to make your own custom shells you can get access to all of that on my Patreon page and you'll be able to access that at any tier. So once again, a massive thanks to my patrons and I'll see you in the next video.